My mother-in-law suspected that my wife was seeing someone else. So she arranged for me to work at my wife's company, hoping to cultivate our relationship and start a family soon. But I acted in a contradictory manner, earning a high salary while selling my wife's schedule to her moonlight lover. I even created opportunities for him, getting my wife drunk and sending her to his bed. Although my wife cheated on me, I still have integrity. Watching them being affectionate with each other, I would gossip with my colleagues. On the day of the divorce, I was overjoyed, but my ex-wife cried. Husband, I was wrong. Let's remarry. You're quite ugly, and yet you dare to think that way. Chapter 1 After three years of marriage, Sherry still refused to share a bed with me. My mother-in-law was getting anxious. When will I have a grandchild if you two continue like this? After much thought, she secretly arranged for me to work at Sherry's company, with a monthly salary of 500000 Now Sherry is the one running the company. As the saying goes, the one who is closer to the water gets the moon first. Son-in-law, I believe in you. Strive to get Sherry pregnant sooner, so our family can have an heir. On my first day at the company, I knew I was doomed. By Sherry's side was her newly appointed assistant, who had studied abroad on the day she married me. That night, Sherry coldly looked at me and said, although I married you, my heart only belongs to him, before leaving and not returning all night. Indeed, the saying the one who is closer to the water gets the moon first is true. Unfortunately, this tower was not built for me. I chose to give up, quietly surviving in this inconspicuous sales position. But silence is not my style after all. With my handsome and humorous personality, even if I sit still, I exude my own charming hormones. In less than half a day, I infiltrated the department. During leisure time, the sales team transformed into gossip maniacs, munching on melon seeds while chatting about everything. From trivial matters at the company's front desk to the stories that Sherry and her Moonlight Lover couldn't avoid. Within two months of his return, the Moonlight Lover moved into Sherry's villa in Yunnan Bay, going to and from work together every day and enjoying many privileges in the company. The Moonlight Lover was impressive. I couldn't help but feel embarrassed if I didn't make some money off him. I made a bet with my colleagues. I bet 200 yuan that Sherry will divorce her husband within two months at the latest. As I looked at the responses from my colleagues, who were eagerly throwing in their bets, I couldn't help but smile. Divorce, get rich. Chapter 2 Feeling quite pleased with myself, I unexpectedly bumped into Lee, the moonlight lover. His hand holding the coffee trembled, and he awkwardly curled his lips at me. Lee didn't say anything. I chose to take the initiative. Let's make a deal. Lee pursed his lips. Go ahead, tell me. For 1,000 yuan, I won't tell Sherry's family about your affairs at the company. If you agree, add me as a friend and transfer the money. Lee seemed shocked, but he decisively added me as a friend and transferred 1,000 yuan. For 1 yuan, you're not allowed to tell Sherry about my affairs at the company. Deal or no deal? Lee looked at me as if I were crazy. To that, I could only chuckle. With just a few words, I could make a profit of 999 yuan. Would I tell this fool? I took Lee's silence as consent and transferred him one yuan. Indeed, making money off the Moonlight Lover was quite lucrative. I felt that the two of us could have a long-term partnership. So, you'll cover for me. A base salary of 3,000 yuan, and I'll be your little informant. Any news related to Sherry, I'll notify you through WeChat, and each message is an additional 500 yuan. Silently, Lee transferred me 3,000 yuan. Great. I have work to do. When I returned home after work, I was surprised to find Sherry there. She was sitting on the couch, reading a newspaper. From changing my shoes to entering the house, throughout the entire process, she didn't even lift her head once. This displeased my mother-in-law, who frowned and wanted to reprimand her. I quickly gave my mother-in-law a signal with my eyes. I was worried that my mother-in-law would interfere in my relationship with Sherry, potentially leading to an early divorce before I could gather evidence of her affair. My mother-in-law took a deep breath and arrogantly turned her head towards the kitchen. Only then did Sherry look up at me. She seemed hesitant to speak. I gave her an encouraging look. Wife, do you have something to say to me? Sherry pursed her lips and surprisingly chose to shake her head. No. I almost performed a celebratory dance on the spot. So, she wants a divorce, right? What's there to be afraid of saying? Afraid that I won't agree? She thinks highly of me? She should know that although our families had some intentions of a wealthy union, over the years, Sherry's family has risen in power while mine has been squandered by my stepfather and stepbrother. If she wants to give me money to leave, should I leave slowly? Subconsciously, I patted my pectoral muscles. At that moment, my mother-in-law walked out of the kitchen with a spatula in hand. Sherry, did you scold Chris again? Sherry furrowed her brows, giving me a disdainful look, 
then left without saying a word. Chapter 3 At the dining table, my mother-in-law scolded Sherry harshly, then turned to console me. Son-in-law, don't worry. I know Sherry well. After being blind for so many years, it's time for her to wake up. In my mind, I thought, don't wake up. If she really wakes up and realizes that I'm a catch, it would be troublesome. Not everyone wants second-hand goods. But on the surface, I nodded and said, yes. Mom, don't worry. I'll make my move on her. Moonlight lover, and make sure she takes over the position of the moonlight lover early, helping me escape from this predicament. I didn't forget to send a text message to Lee in the meantime. Sherry got angry and left because of me. I predict she'll come to you. Impress her. The moonlight lover instantly sent a generous red envelope of 500 yuan. Just as I received the red envelope, my mother-in-law gave me some advice. Tomorrow night, Sherry has an event. I'll make sure manager Lou gets her drunk, then I'll give you the information. Take advantage of her drunkenness, escort her to a hotel, and then. My mother-in-law forcefully tapped the white rice in her bowl. I was somewhat grateful that I had a good relationship with my mother-in-law. Otherwise, if she played dirty on me, and the next morning I found myself lying on Sherry's bed, wouldn't I go crazy? I immediately gave my mother-in-law a five-star rating. I'll take care of it. I'll make sure my wife will never forget it. My mother-in-law was deeply moved and handed me a USB flash drive, saying it contained 20 gigabytes worth of resources. I quickly turned around and sold it off. Hey, buddy, Sherry's mom gave me something good. It's worth 10,000 yuan. Interested? The Moonlight Lover didn't waste any words and transferred the money directly. Got it. I'll have it delivered to the front desk tomorrow morning, in a red gift box. Chapter 4 My mother-in-law is a decisive and powerful woman. She holds a lot of influence in Sherry's household. She made it clear that Sherry should be persuaded, and who would dare not to follow. That night, several department managers took turns to make sure Sherry drank to her heart's content. Now it was my turn to step in. With the help of manager Lou, I guided Sherry to the presidential suite prepared by my mother-in-law. Truly, my mother-in-law is impressive. For our first time together, the suite was meticulously decorated, offering a variety of options. I didn't hesitate to sell my wife. I immediately took a photo of Sherry in bed and sent it to the Moonlight Lover. 20,000 yuan, not a penny less. Lee wasted no time in transferring the money, as always. Just as I received the money, Sherry suddenly sat up straight. Her eyes were bloodshot as she looked at me. Her head tilted, exuding a hint of sensuality. Chris? I nodded and pressed her back onto the bed. She struggled, raising her hand, but I quickly assured her that I had no interest in her. I told her that Lee would take care of her in a little while. She immediately stopped moving. Oh, this worthless woman, I made a profit selling her. I turned around and started to leave, but Sherry suddenly jumped up from the bed and took a few steps forward, hugging me from behind by the waist. Honey, don't go, I wanna have your baby. Sherry seemed like she had gone mad, forcefully pulling me towards the bed. Luckily, I work out regularly and have some strength, or else I might have lost my virginity right here. After a fierce battle with me, Sherry quickly fell asleep on the bed. Not long after, Lee arrived. He looked somewhat shocked at my torn clothes. I reassured him, don't worry, I'm a principled person, I won't touch anything that I've handled. He immediately showed admiration and even tried to establish a brotherly bond with me, but I waved him off. How about sending a red envelope instead? Well, I tearfully earned another 10,000 yuan. As I closed the door and left, I looked at the remaining balance in my wallet, feeling somewhat touched. But even more touching things are yet to come. Sherry, after three years of marriage, you still have feelings for your moonlight lover. Our marriage is also coming to an end. Chapter 5 I took the already prepared room key and checked into the room opposite. After a quick shower, I went to sleep. The next day, the alarm went off at 7 o'clock and I called Sherry on my phone. She answered quickly but didn't say anything. I asked her where she was. At the apartment in the eastern suburbs. I asked Sherry why her voice was so hoarse if she was sick with a cold. Probably. All right, take medicine if you have a cold. I hung up the phone, sat by the bed for five minutes, and sent a message to the paparazzo I had already arranged. How dare that woman deceive me. I'll make sure she faces the consequences immediately. Get ready to move. People who handle money never disappoint. Ten minutes later, through the peephole, I saw several suspicious paparazzi surrounding Sherry's room. One of them disguised as a hotel staff member knocked on the door. Shortly after, Sherry and Lee appeared at the door, both wearing hotel bathrobes. The paparazzi immediately went crazy taking photos, frightening Sherry into jumping into Lee's arms. Lee immediately showed his boyfriend power and scolded the paparazzi, slamming the door shut with a loud bang. 
I settled the remaining payment with the paparazzi and hummed a tune as I went to Sherry's office. Just as I sat down, I overheard the juicy gossip between Sherry and Lee, but it was all leftovers for me. With a commanding presence, I declared on the spot that I wanted to make a wager. 500 yuan, betting on Sherry and her husband to get divorced before the end of this month. An hour later, Lee privately messaged me, asking for advice. Sherry's mother wants to meet me. Before I could name a price, he voluntarily transferred 20,000 yuan to me. Feeling delighted, I sincerely pointed him towards a shining path. Stay true to yourself, never forget your initial intentions. But what I didn't expect was. Chapter 6. Coming home from work. A harmonious atmosphere at home. My mother-in-law and Sherry are both here, acting as if nothing happened. Sherry even changed her usual coldness and proactively placed slippers in front of me. Is Lee not doing his part? Did I tell him to stick to his own path all the way to the Pacific Ocean? At the dinner table, my mother-in-law even mentioned promoting me. Son-in-law, since you've started working at the company, don't stay in the sales department anymore. Tomorrow, go directly to work as Sherry's assistant. Working together as a couple will bring great benefits. I just wanted to end this trashy marriage. But I pretended to agree with a smile on my face. As soon as I turned around, I messaged Lee. What's going on? Lee replied. Her mom is just giving too much. Damn it. I'm starting to resent his lack of backbone. But human desires are insatiable. No one ever complains about getting more. Otherwise, Lee wouldn't have joined Sherry's company. I planned to ignore him for a while. I obediently followed my mother-in-law's plan and became Sherry's assistant. The day I left the sales department, everyone looked at me in shock, completely unaware that I, the enthusiastic gossip guy, was actually Sherry's cuckolded husband. A few colleagues privately messaged me, saying, Bro, you're amazing. You're like a ninja turtle. I thanked everyone for their compliments. Immediately, I sent a small red envelope worth almost 9.9 .9 yuan to everyone in the group as a token of gratitude. Don't mind it, I'm just a man with an empty reputation. It won't be long before I'm no longer her husband. Don't forget about our bet. As I turned around, I bumped into Sherry. What bet? she asked. I immediately signaled to my colleagues with my eyes. And everyone eagerly replied. The bet on when you and Chris, the assistant, will get divorced. Sherry looked up at me. Her eyes were slightly red, her voice hoarse, and she exuded the aura of a scheming woman. No divorce. Chris, we will never get divorced. Sherry reached out to hold my hand, but instinctively, I avoided it. Her hand froze in midair, and after a moment, she sniffed and withdrew it. Let's go, husband. Chapter 7 On the third day as Sherry's assistant. I feel like I'm not here to be an assistant, I'm here to be a boss. Sherry never gives me any tasks to do. She even lets me sit on the most comfortable chair because I love sleeping. She even had someone buy a big bed for me and put up a curtain so I can lie down whenever I want. I'm starting to feel restless. If this continues, I'll end up being a useless leech supported by Sherry. After some thought, I decided to go into lovey-dovey mode. Posting on social media all day long. My wife looks so beautiful today. She bought me a big gold chain. My wife gave me 10 million as pocket money. Wife. Finally, Lee took the bait. On the seventh day, he showed up in Sherry's office wearing a white shirt, looking pale. I was lying lazily on the sofa, but when I saw him, I quickly sat up. Sherry also stood up and walked quickly towards him in her high heels. It seemed like Sherry wanted to throw herself into Lee's arms, but she couldn't because of me, the third party. Even when she reached out her hand, she withdrew it. Why? Are you here? She asked. Lee gave her a sorrowful look that could rival that of a movie star. Sherry, I miss you. Sherry's eyes turned red and she looked like she was enduring a lot. I suggested, should I leave and give you some space? Chris, don't talk nonsense. There's nothing between me and Lee. I nodded seriously. Well, wife, I trust your character. There really is nothing between you and Lee. But look at him, he looks pale and walks with a ghostly air. It's obvious that he's been through a lot recently, emotionally and physically. Wife, I think it's only right for you, both emotionally and morally, to personally take him to the hospital. Sherry looked surprised. You're not angry? Honey, as a husband, I enjoy helping others and assisting my friends. Why would I be angry? Thank you. Without hesitation, Sherry grabbed Lee's hand and left. When Sherry returned home that night, she got slapped hard by her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law showed her the gossip pictures on her phone. Sherry, apologize to Chris. Her mother-in-law really knows how to handle things. Isn't it only natural for Sherry to defend Lee? Now, making her apologize will only trigger her rebellious mindset, won't it?
I looked at Sherry with anticipation. I felt like the words divorce were about to come out of her mouth any second, but she disappointed me. She actually looked at me and sincerely said three words. I'm sorry, did she really forget about her own affair? To make matters worse, Sherry even wants to have a child with me. Of course, here I seriously doubt. She wants me to be a father. At night, I put on my home clothes, ready to go to sleep, only to find her lying on the bed in a sexy nightgown. I promptly betrayed her. Lee, Sherry is on my bed. I'll give you ten bucks to take her away. I watched as Lee immediately accepted my red envelope, feeling a bit sorry for him. Trashy women are just money pits. Luckily, Lee is quick. In less than three minutes, he called Sherry. Sherry stared at the incoming call display, hesitating for over ten seconds before finally answering. After a short while, she went to the bathroom and changed into her going out clothes, looking at me. I'm sorry, Chris. Lee has a cold and a fever. I have to go see him. As she walked towards the door, Sherry suddenly stopped again. Husband, I promise, this will be the last time. Chapter 8. I can't drag this on any longer. Lately, Sherry seems to be like she's on drugs, discovering my weaknesses. If she gets infatuated with me and doesn't want a divorce, it will be troublesome. I don't want to prolong the divorce process. I found Lee and said, 200,000, I'll give you a killer deal. Ensure a successful divorce between me and Sherry. Lee gave me a down payment of 100,000, and the rest would be paid after the job was done. I felt good about it, and Lee agreed right away. I told him, Sherry has a strong ego. You just need to find a way to let her know that it was me who arranged for you to go to the hotel when she was drunk and even arranged for the paparazzi. Out of anger, she will definitely divorce me. But just as I was about to execute this plan, Sherry got pregnant. 48 days. I breathed a sigh of relief. After work that day, in the living room, there were Sherry, her mother-in-law, and Lee. I was extremely satisfied with the situation. Maintaining a serious face on the surface, but internally, I was ecstatic as I changed into my slippers. I had indeed achieved the outcome I desired. Divorce. The divorce agreement was still fresh. I received five properties under Sherry's name, 50 million in cash, and a monthly alimony of 500,000. I decisively signed my name. Sherry's mother-in-law looked at me, wiped her tears, and sighed. Sherry, you're an adult now. Don't regret the decisions you make. Sherry didn't respond, she just looked at me and said, meet me at the Civil Affairs Bureau at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. After saying that, she grabbed Lee's hand and left. The next morning, I waited for her at the Civil Affairs Bureau. She disappeared for the whole night, and now she looked like a ghost with red eyes. I didn't dare show my emotions, and instead, I pretended to comfort her a few times. Finally, I successfully obtained the divorce certificate, and I couldn't help but let out a laugh. But Sherry, in front of me, suddenly teared up. She grabbed me forcefully. Husband, let's remarry. I pushed Sherry's hand away, with a radiant smile. Sorry, I don't have a habit of recycling trash. I took the opportunity to show off my divorce certificate in the sales department, earning 5,000 yuan. Let's have a meal together when we have the chance. Chapter 9. I immediately contacted a moving company on that day to move my belongings from Sherry's house and moved into the duplex villa that I had prepared six months ago. Then I called my best friend and told him that I would officially take over as the boss the next day. I hadn't been idle during the three years that Sherry left me hanging. With the connections from both my family and Sherry's family, I managed to open a foreign trade company a year ago, emptying my own little treasure chest. My best friend acted as the visible boss, while I operated behind the scenes. Now that I no longer needed to hide behind Sherry's son-in-law status, there was no need for secrecy. My best friend was very happy and said he would treat me to celebrate my newfound single status. I didn't refuse, but I underestimated his extravagance. The next day when I arrived at the venue, I was dumbfounded. My best friend had organized a grand banquet, inviting all the familiar faces in our circle, including Sherry. Lee was standing next to Sherry, looking at me, and she had tears in her eyes again. I didn't expect that the foreign trade company in the city was yours. I lightly touched my wine glass against hers, delivering a fatal blow. Don't invite me to your wedding, I don't want to give you a red envelope. After that, I quietly retreated to a corner. This banquet turned into a massive gossip session, with countless eyes shifting between me, Sherry, and Lee. Sigh, indulging in gossip always leads to retribution. Just as I was thinking of sneaking away, a stunning beauty walked in with confident strides. Her eyes were captivating, filled with charm. I was stunned, quickly calling out, Cousin. Chapter 10. Cousin Lin, three years older than me. She is currently in charge of the Song family's affairs. 
She has some connections with my former mother-in-law's side, so I started calling her cousin along with Sherry. Leaning against the doorframe, Lynn smiled with a seductive charm, I'm not really your cousin. You're divorced now, and I don't want to take advantage of you. My instincts told me that this girl was a bit dangerous, and I wanted to run away. Lin continued, are you interested in collaborating on the Tianchang project? I hesitated a bit. It's not that the collaboration itself is bad, Lin's family's influence surpasses that of 10 Sherry families combined. Half a year ago, the foreign trade company in the city had collaborated with Lin's family once and gained many benefits. But the problem is, the foreign trade company in the city is definitely not Lin's best choice. This girl is known in the circle for being ruthless, and I'm afraid she'll take advantage of me. Maybe not. Are you afraid of me? Yeah. I honestly replied, I only have this much wealth, not enough for you to play with, cousin. Lin chuckled softly, with just this amount of money, what can I play with? Don't worry, I'm not interested in your money. And I guarantee that you will come to me willingly for collaboration. She turned her head, looking towards Sherry in the hall. That's when I noticed that Sherry was staring straight at me and Lin, her gaze filled with danger. I immediately felt a sense of panic. My mother-in-law always said that Sherry was blind and needed to wake up. Isn't it strange that she suddenly realized my worth after divorcing me? I didn't hesitate. All right, cousin, there's no better time than the present. Let's finalize our collaboration today. I was afraid that Lin would change her mind. After all, not everyone can get their hands on the Song family's projects. I immediately pulled her upstairs and booked a room. Chapter 11. It took us four hours to finalize the contract. During that time, Lin insisted on playing ten rounds of Honor of Kings with me and ended up dragging me down by eight ranks. When playing games, I like to be in a comfortable position, whether lying down, crouching, or leaning. My formal attire was wrinkled, and my carefully styled hair was a bit messy. As I opened the door to leave, Sherry was standing right in front of me. She looked at me with a particularly shocked expression, seemingly a bit saddened. Behind her, Lynn happened to be walking towards us, rubbing her waist and laughing, Chris, you're really amazing. Look at that, how well Lynn speaks. Sherry was so angry that her body started trembling. I knew she must have misunderstood. Anyone would have misunderstood. Who would believe that two people, a man and a woman, booked a room to play Honor of Kings? So, I didn't bother explaining. If you have something to say, say it. If you're sick, take your medicine. Don't block the way, okay? Sherry clenched her fists, when did this happen? I replied immediately, just now. Who would believe that? Does it matter? I looked at Sherry with a cold face, don't forget your identity, you're just my ex-wife. In other words, whatever I do now has nothing to do with you. Let alone the fact that Sherry and I didn't do anything, even if we did, it would be proper and above board. Lynn chimed in from behind me. Chris, while we're in the mood, how about a few more rounds? I nodded and slammed the hotel door shut. I think that's a good idea. Great, Lin managed to drag me down by another 10 ranks. As we left the hotel, I had dark circles under my eyes. Because of the cold, Lin shivered beside me. As a man, I had to show gentlemanly manners, so I immediately put my coat over her. Sherry, that persistent ghost, appeared in front of me like a specter. Chris, why are you treating me like this? The way she said it made it seem like I, as the tempted one, had become the tempter. I reminded Sherry, you're pregnant, and the child is not mine. Sherry's face turned pale. That was an accident. I remained expressionless. Sherry, if accidents like that are what you want, I can give you ten of them outside. Would you like that? Chapter 12 Lynn didn't take advantage of me. We only collaborated for less than three months, and I managed to make a small profit. To show my gratitude, I planned to take her out for a meal. Little did I know, I didn't check the calendar before going out. Just after finishing our meal, we bumped into Sherry. She was completely drunk looking at me like a dog that had just found a bone. She nodded and walked towards me. Husband. She raised her hand, wanting me to hug her. Before I could react, Lynn took a step forward and proactively hugged Sherry. Cousin, be mindful of your influence. You're already divorced, so stop clinging to others. Sherry suddenly pushed Lynn away, instantly sobering up from her drunken state. Chris, I won't give up on you. Me. It's a bit overwhelming. Lynn spoke up for me. It's useless, she finds you repulsive. When I returned home that night, my childhood friend sent me a message. Bro, what happened to your ex-wife? Along with the voice message, he forwarded a video. In the video, Sherry was wearing the same clothes she had on tonight and causing a scene at a drinking party. She overturned the table, ruining all the delicious food, but she didn't realize her own mistake. Paranoid and insane. 
Chris is my husband, even if we're divorced, he's still my husband. Even if I'm carrying someone else's child, he's still my husband. I thought to myself, Sherry, where were you when you should have said that? Oh, busy making love with your moonlight lover. There's a saying, how does it go again? Belated affection is cheaper than grass? How unfortunate. I decisively took a shower and went to bed early. The next morning, I woke up early, opened the curtains, walked out to the balcony, stretched lazily, and just as I was about to yawn, I froze. Lynn was standing on the balcony of the villa next to mine, wearing a silky nightgown, leisurely enjoying herself. When she saw me, she greeted me with a hello. Good morning, neighbor. Chapter 13 After having breakfast, I finally saw the private message Sherry sent me. It was around 4 in the morning. All of them were voice messages. I randomly clicked on one, and it was filled with a sobbing tone. Husband, I was wrong. Can we remarry? I didn't bother listening to the other voice messages, as it would be a waste of data. I immediately blocked Sherry. Thinking about it, I decided to reach out to Lee. What's the situation with Sherry? Lee replied, she had a miscarriage, just last night. Oh. No wonder she's suddenly seeking reconciliation again. I suggested, don't let her off the hook. Make her continue to have children for you. Lee didn't respond right away. After a while, he suddenly sent me a voice message. I answered the call, and it turned out to be Sherry's voice. Her voice was hoarse. Chris, you really went to great lengths to divorce me. Is this how you treat me for Lynn? I didn't want to hear such nonsense. Sherry, do I need to do anything else to divorce you? As a scummy woman, don't you have any self-awareness? I don't love Lee. I've said it before, he's just an accident. Oh, really? I believe you. I waved my hand at the air and hung up the call. Sherry continued to send me frantic voice messages, all of which I rejected. After rejecting about 10 of them in a row, she sent me a message. Chris, you'll regret it. I sighed and blocked Lee as well. I figured I might not have any more opportunities to make extra money in the future. After packing up my things and getting ready to leave, Lee called me. His voice sounded heavy. 5,000 yuan, I'll sell you some information. It seems like karma has come back to bite me. I decisively cut off Lee, and with the final 500 yuan, I completed this business transaction. Just one sentence. Chris, be careful of Sherry. She found out about our deal, and she's very angry. The consequences will be severe. Thinking about what Sherry said earlier, it finally clicked in my mind. Raising an eyebrow, I asked, so, she thinks it's all my fault? Yes. That scummy woman deserves to be unloved. But doesn't she love you? She doesn't love me, Lee said. Otherwise, why would I only want her money and not her love? Lee rambled on for a bit, and in the end, he mentioned that he has made quite a fortune recently and plans to leave this place. He wants to go back to his hometown and find a reliable woman to marry. Then, we deleted each other's contact information. Before deleting, Lee complimented me. Chris, Sherry really doesn't deserve you. Ha, huh, did he even need to say that? Chapter 14 Sherry probably hates me now. She quickly started causing trouble for me. In just two months, several clients were lost by the foreign trade company. Fortunately, I had Lynn as a backup, so my foundation wasn't shaken. But my childhood friend was extremely worried and kept suggesting that we confront Sherry. I reassured him. It's too early. Let's first go buy a big Italian cannon. My friend was taken aback. Is it really that serious? I laughed. Perhaps it's even more serious than you imagine. His tension immediately heightened. Taking advantage of his receptive state, I handed him a cooperation project that I had prepared in advance. Do your best and secure this deal. But within half a month, my friend came to me in tears. It's over, Chris. Someone beat me to it. I calmly took a sip of hot tea. I know. I never expected you to get it done, but unfortunately, this was something only you could do. My friend was a bit confused, and I said, Sherry committed a major business mistake. She was anxious to compete with me and didn't bother to check the background of the other party. That client happens to be the brother-in-law of the wealthy Jean family, who is facing significant financial trouble. By cooperating with Sherry, he's hoping to fill that gap. Since she loves snatching other people's business so much, I decided to give her this great gift. My friend immediately hugged and kissed my face, saying I was handsome and amazing. Just then, Lynn called. Would you like to have dinner with me? I didn't refuse. At the Western restaurant, after clinking our glasses, I stared directly at Lynn and said, I heard that my cousin has established a partnership with the Overseas W Group. It won't be easy for Lynn's family to fully absorb all those orders, right? Lynn nodded, it's a bit challenging, but with some digestive aids, it's not impossible. I used my knife to cut the steak in half. 
Across from me, she smiled gently and said, but if you're interested. I immediately looked up at her, interested? 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 Even if it's just a 50 cent net profit, I'm interested. Lynn shook her head, 50 cents is too little. I don't want you to work so hard. According to the current supply volume in the city, I'll give you 10% of the orders. How does that sound? My cousin is generous. I raised my glass. Lynn didn't clink glasses with me. She propped her head up and looked at me, teasingly captivating. Chris, who said I want to be your sister? My heart started beating faster. But I didn't have the audacity yet. Money is more reliable than love. Chapter 15 I got into Lynn's car and headed home in the evening. Before the car even entered the garage, I saw Sherry standing at my doorstep. It had been a while since we last met, and she looked much thinner. When she saw me getting out of Lynn's car, her gaze fell directly on me. Finally, she walked towards me and said, Chris, I want to talk to you. Lynn lowered the car window and gave me a meaningful look. I replied to Sherry, just say it directly. Sherry hesitated for a moment before speaking, Chris, I've realized something during this time. I admit that I was wrong before, I made mistakes. But we've been married for three years, and there must still be some feelings between us. You and I both know that you married Lynn while still being married to me. I'll give back the clients I took from you. What do you think? I took a step back. No, Sherry, don't try to blame me. You abandoned me for three years, was that easy for me? I'm a normal man, and some days were tough. And now, even after our divorce, you still want to insult me. I didn't mean it that way, Chris, Sherry pursed her lips and glanced at Lynn, anyway, between the two of us. We're even now. You don't hold it against me, and I won't hold it against you. Let's remarry. The thinking of a scumbag is really hard to understand. Before I could respond, Lynn got out of the car. She leaned on my shoulder and said, What's the matter, Sherry? Openly seducing your sister's husband, isn't that a bit heartless? Sister's husband? I looked down at Lynn, and my heart started beating even faster. From my perspective, I could see just a glimpse. In any case, her figure was amazing. Sherry's gaze towards me suddenly turned ominous. Chris, you and Lynn won't end up together. I won't let you have a future. I got angry. Who I end up with is none of your business. If you don't want me to have a future, I'll make sure to have one just to show you. Do you believe me? Sherry stormed off in anger. Watching her retreating figure, I felt strangely satisfied. As I turned my head, Lynn was rubbing her chin, looking at me. How about we make it happen sooner rather than later? Make it happen? A future? My face turned red. You're a woman, how can you be even more frivolous than me? After conducting an internal survey in the company, I found out that being too serious won't help in finding a husband. So, I've decided to stop being serious from today onwards. Little Chris, are you ready? Chapter 16 I thought Lynn was joking. I couldn't figure out what my unscrupulous cousin was up to. Turns out, she was serious. From the next day onwards, she would wait for me on the balcony every day to greet me. She wore increasingly sexy nightgowns. When I left for work in the morning, she would be waiting at the doorstep, gracefully swaying. Although I hadn't agreed to Lynn's pursuit, rumors started spreading within our circle that Lynn and I were in a passionate romance. My sister's advances were too intense, and I faintly felt that if this continued, I wouldn't be able to resist. As for Sherry, news about her would occasionally reach my ears. Because of the clients she took from me, she had been frantically trying to fill the gaps, even shaking the foundation of the main company. She started laying off employees like crazy, but the money saved from the layoffs was still far from enough. In the end, it was my ex-mother-in-law who stepped in, relieved Sherry of her position, and sold a few properties to stabilize Sherry's family business. Sherry temporarily became unemployed, and the group chat in our circle occasionally shared a glimpse of her downfall. But no matter what, I couldn't calm my heart. Every time I saw news about Sherry, I would remember what Lee once said to me. Chris, be careful with Sherry. Chapter 17. I decided to meet up with Sherry and talk. She's like a ticking time bomb now, and I thought it would be better if I took the lead. Sherry agreed readily, and we quickly set a time and decided to meet at her place. I didn't object since her ex-mother-in-law was there, and I assumed Sherry wouldn't do anything to me. But when I arrived as planned, I discovered that her mother-in-law wasn't at home. My heart skipped a beat, but Sherry didn't seem bothered. She was wearing a light blue dress, looking elegant and graceful. She turned off the restaurant lights, lit some candles, and served a carefully prepared steak, placing the cutlery neatly in front of me as she sat across from me, a smile on her face. Chris, do you know what day it is today? I didn't answer because I genuinely couldn't think of any special significance. Sherry's expression turned slightly cold for a moment before she smiled again. Today is our wedding anniversary. 
Instinctively, I rubbed my empty finger. Yes, today is our wedding anniversary. But in our three years of marriage, we had never celebrated this day, so, I had long forgotten about it. Sherry's opening statement made me uneasy, and I decisively changed the subject, Sherry, I came to talk to you about us. She smiled, go ahead. Sherry, three years ago, you started taking over the company, and two years ago, your mother-in-law completely let go and allowed you to take charge. You've been managing the company well all these years, and this recent failure shouldn't diminish that. Yeah, I know, she replied. So, Sherry, I hope you can adjust your mindset. I will, Sherry said, cutting a piece of steak and putting it in her mouth, savoring it before asking me, so, Chris, did you come to talk to me about getting a divorce? Sherry's dismissive attitude was starting to annoy me. I vaguely felt that maybe I had been impulsive today. My attempt to take the lead might have given Sherry the opportunity to take control. I took a deep breath. No. Sherry's face immediately turned serious. So, Chris, you go to great lengths to try and divorce me, then set me up for such a big fall, and yet you don't have any intention of remarrying me. Why did you come to find me? The paranoia in Sherry's eyes made my heart skip a beat. I tried to remain calm. Sherry, after all, you are my ex-wife, and I don't want to see you fall so low. Well then, Sherry stood up, marry me again. I also stood up. It seems that today isn't a suitable time for a conversation. Maybe next time. I took a step to leave, but after a few steps, dizziness suddenly overwhelmed me. As I collapsed, Sherry rushed to my side, flipped me over, and slapped me hard across the face. Chris, you're heartless. My head was buzzing, and then she suddenly became gentle. I'm sorry, husband, it's all my fault. I realized too late that I've fallen in love with you. Can we start over? At that moment, my phone screen lit up with a call from Lynn. She smirked. Chris, I'll make sure you know that Lynn doesn't love you either. Your choices are destined to be wrong. Then she answered the call, Lynn's call. Lynn, come to Sherry's house. Chapter 18. Sherry locked me in the utility room and sent me a new phone. The phone lit up, showing the surveillance footage of Sherry's living room. Soon, I saw Lynn in the footage. Dressed in formal attire, she still couldn't hide her allure. After entering Sherry's house, she sat down at Sherry's invitation. Where's Chris? She asked. No rush, Sherry replied. Sherry served Lynn a cup of tea and then asked her, I'm curious, how did my cousin fall for my ex-husband? Former husband, Lynn corrected her. Fine, former husband. Why did my cousin like my former husband? Lynn looked silently at Sherry for a while before speaking. Why did I fall for Chris? Maybe it's because of you, Sherry. It was the first time I listened to Lynn speaking so quietly. From the first time she met me to our current interactions. The first time we met was at your wedding. Sherry, you probably didn't notice, but Chris loved you, really loved you. I felt sorry for him back then, thinking he was blind and loved the wrong person. Later on, when your mother took him to expand his network, I saw him a few times, and I realized he wasn't what I had imagined. He wasn't just a love-struck fool, he knew there was more to life than just love. He knew what he wanted. At that time, he wanted to be a good husband to you, so he earnestly learned everything your mother taught him. As Sherry listened to Lynn's words, her body trembled slightly. It was as if she had learned something unimaginable. No, it's impossible. He loves me? He wanted to be a serious husband to me? Subconsciously, I clenched my teeth. Anger surged within me, wanting to tear Sherry's mouth apart. But I couldn't help feeling a sourness in my heart. I had once loved Sherry's past, so intensely. That's why I could be so decisive and merciless when I divorced her. Yes, I had once loved Sherry. Unfortunately, the person involved didn't know, but Lynn saw it clearly. Lynn's eyes filled with pity. Sherry, have you ever thought about why your mother liked Chris so much? If he didn't love you, would your mother still like him so much? Sherry's expression tightened, and it was unclear what she was thinking. Lynn continued. Later on, I noticed a change in his gaze when he looked at you. It became calm, self-assured, devoid of love. And during that time, he founded Zochung. He also stole my heart. Sherry, you will never know that the treasure was once in your hands, something you could have held tightly with just a little effort, but you missed it forever. Chapter 19 Lynn's voice was so beautiful that Sherry's face gradually turned pale as she listened to her words. Sherry, I fell in love with Chris entirely because of you. You loved someone else, leaving him to protect your marriage alone, but I saw his perseverance and resilience. Over these years, he hasn't done anything to betray you. You irritated him, provoked him to plan for divorce, but have you ever thought about what he did for you before that? And what have you been doing all these years? Lynn easily took control of the situation, her voice suddenly turning cold. Sherry, you want to accuse Chris of bigamy, 
but do you think you deserve him? When you didn't want him, he was nothing. And when you wanted him, sorry, you couldn't afford him a long time ago. I thought Sherry would go crazy. But in the end, she sat on the floor, wailing loudly. So, he did love me. At the same time, the front door of Sherry's house was forcefully opened, and the police and mother-in-law rushed in. Sherry was subdued. Lynn's composure completely collapsed. She grabbed Sherry's collar like a madwoman. Where is he? Sherry looked towards the utility room. Soon, with a loud bang, Lynn burst through the door. She untied the rope that bound me, removed the gag from my mouth, and tremblingly threw herself into my arms. I wiped away a tear in secret. I never expected that my biggest secret, my love for Sherry, would be so clearly seen by her. I thought I was just a passing figure in her romantic life, but I didn't know that I had left an indelible mark on her heart. After a while, I teased Lynn. Cousin, weren't you calm just now? Calm my ass. Lynn couldn't help but curse. You loved Sherry, and I planned to keep that secret hidden in my heart forever, but now it's all out in the open. How can I be calm? You heartless jerk. I hugged Lynn and laughed happily. Cousin, I never knew you had liked me for so long. She rolled her eyes at me. I've been waiting for you to get a divorce all the time. Do you think it's easy for me? You have no idea how I've spent this past year. Every day, I wanted to come and ask you when you were going to get divorced. But I was afraid Sherry would find out. If that woman knew someone had thoughts about you, would I still have a chance? I was about to go crazy from laughing. Her face looked even worse. All right, I won't tease her anymore. I decided to give her a little sweetness. I gently kissed her forehead. Cousin, as compensation, I'll give you a husband, okay? Lynn didn't respond, but I could feel her heart pounding strongly. After a while, she finally said, no backing out. I laughed. Of course, I wouldn't back out. With such an exceptional daughter-in-law, who would ever back out? Not only would I not back out, I would cherish her for a lifetime.